Okay, this is a very, very interesting test for the level of luck that each of us has relative to one another. So this is for a spectator and a performer, just a two of you. Now it is true you could have more than two people involved if you would like. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to see whether we're equally lucky or equally unlucky or if one of us is luckier than the other, okay? Um, so as you can see, I have a good selection of cards here of value and suits and color, okay? There's, I believe, 24 cards all together, okay? So what we're going to do is we're gonna gather these up and I'm going to go ahead and, you know, since we both saw the cards, why don't we go ahead and kind of mix these cards a bit. Um, in fact, I have a, a die here, so I guess we can use that to help us. Um, so I'm going to begin dealing into piles. Now, if you were here, I would just have you tell me when to stop dealing, but since you're not here, we'll use this die here. So one, two, three, four, five, and slide that over. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. Uh, three, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. And then there's only one card left, okay. So um, to really mix these cards, uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll stack them in the opposite order to which they were dealt. That will really speed up the randomization of these cards. Um, we can do some additional mixing if you would like. Would you like me to do some other mixing that would really scramble these? It would. Okay. Um, let's see. What could we do? We could do, have you heard of a Klondike shuffle? This is where you take the top and bottom card off as one. Kind of a fun shuffle. Um, and it's a great way to mix the cards because you're, you're taking the top and bottom off and bringing them together, okay? So it mixes the cards in a way that no other shuffle does. Uh, why don't we uh, follow that up with a left-right shuffle? Uh, why don't you tell me uh, which pile you want stacked on top of the other? Would you want left on right or right on left? You want right on left? Okay, very good, okay. So do you feel like that's enough shuffling for now? You want to do one more of the dealing outs like I did at the beginning? Okay, one, two, three. Uh, one, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, that went off, but it is a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five. Look at that, perfect. Perfect number of cards, okay? In fact, this shuffle is called the first shall be last and the last shall be first, uh, which just means you stack them in opposite order. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna deal the cards into three piles, okay? And you'll see why. It will be an interesting way to test our level of luck, actually and see if one of us is kind of luckier than the other in general, okay? So here we go. Um, so this is a game, well, of course, this is a game of luck or to test luck. And we're going to use the parity of the cards to decide that. Now parity, uh, well, it's spelled P-A-R-I-T-Y. Parity refers to whether something is even or odd in the case of numbers. Okay, so like the number two is even, has even parity. Number seven, which is odd, has odd parity, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to um, reveal the top card of each of the three piles, add their value, and then ascertain whether the parity of the sum is even or odd, okay? Now, before we do that, we have to decide uh, what would constitute a win for you, okay? So would a winning little round be uh, one in which the parity of the three cards add up to an even value or an odd? Which of those would you like? You want odd? Okay, so if, if they add up to an odd number, that would be kind of like a winning round for you, okay? Um, let see, what should I choose for myself, even or odd, for when I play? 
Uh, I think I'll follow your example. I, I feel like you would be a good one to imitate here. So I'm going to say odd as well. So if my three car top cards add up to an odd number, then I win, okay? So um, it's customary to have the uh, spectator go first. It's just a common courtesy. So what we're going to do to move forward with this test is I need you to randomly choose one of the piles, okay? Now we could call this pile one, two, three, if you would like, and have that decided by the die because you're not here. But if you were here, you could actually decide. Um, and then whatever pile you choose, we're gonna have you perform a very destructive shuffle, and it truly is. From a mathematical point of view, this shuffle really scrambles the cards thoroughly. It's called the Australian Down Under Shuffle, okay? So to begin with, uh, choose your pile. Well, you're not here, so let's roll this. So this is pile one, two, three. Looks like pile three. Very good, so you're gonna go with this one. Um, so if you were here, I would hand you the cards and you could perform this Australian shuffle. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, I guess you might need me to demonstrate it at least once. So how it works is you take the cards, the top card goes down, the next one goes under. Down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, last one goes on top. Okay, so this is your round here. So what we're looking for, I believe you said you wanted a sum, an odd sum value to come up. Okay, so let's go ahead and check to see what are, what do the top cards for you add up to? Is it an even number or is it odd? Okay. Okay, so let's see how you did. Let's see, a queen counts as a 12. Uh, a 12 plus a 10 is 22, plus three is 25. 25 is an odd value, and you went with an odd parity, so you won your hand. You are starting out very well. Okay, perfect, okay. Now it's my turn. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, kind of divine, uh, let's see, which one should I perform the down under on? Um, in fact, in some ways, let's go ahead and we'll leave that to chance as well. I guess in some ways, maybe we should always leave it to chance, come to think of it, because we want the universe to kind of tell us whether we're lucky or not, right? Okay, um, so why don't we leave that to the universe instead of me choosing, a, you, you might think I'm choosing a, a certain pile for some reason, and I need to assure you that I'm not. So let's go ahead, so uh, one, two, three, and then um, if it happens to be a four, five, or six, we'll go with that, okay? So two, one, two, okay. So apparently, I'm going to perform the down under here. So down, under, down, <laughs> under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top, okay. Well, if you have a good memory, you might remember what these are, but uh, no one knows what that one is, okay. So I believe I went with an odd, right? If, if my parody came out to be um, the sum for the three cards came out to be an odd value, then that would be, that would constitute a winning hand for me. So right now we have a 12 and a three, that's 15. That's, that's odd, that's looking pretty good. Oh, look at that. Ah, so 15 plus one is 16, that's even. So I've lost that round. Darn, I was thinking it was going to come up odd. Okay, so you've won one of yours and I've won zero of mine. Um, okay, well, let's continue this here. Um, so let's go ahead and um, I, I suppose I could have you randomly choose one if you were here. You're not here, so we'll use the die. Oh, one, there we go. So it's that pile right there. We left it to chance. Okay, so your job is to just perform the down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top. 
Now, I believe a, you said a winning round for you would be if these three cards add up to an odd value. Well, let's see if that's true. Um, let's see. 7 plus 3 is 10 plus 1 is 11. You nailed it. You are 2 for 2. I'm 0 for 1. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I've always kind of wondered how lucky I might be or unlucky I might be. I've always thought, uh, I don't think I've ever actually won any kind of competition that involved chance. But uh, anyway, let's push ahead here. So I'll go ahead and roll this. Um, so a six. So I guess our numbering would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this one here, I'll go ahead and do a, a down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top. I'm hoping this comes out to be a sum that has odd parity because that's what I chose. We both chose odd for whatever reason. Um, okay, so a 7 plus a 1 is 8. 8 plus 6, oh darn, that's 14. That's even. I'm 0 for 2. Okay, why don't we do this one more time? Give me a chance to kind of redeem myself and not look so in embarrassingly unlucky. Okay, so it's your turn. So which pile do you want to down under shuffle? That went off. It was a one, but a three. Okay, so one, two, three. So this one. So if you're here, I'd hand those to you and you just go down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one on top. You're hoping for a sum that has odd Parody. Whoops, cards are spinning here. Are you going to pull off three for three? Mm. Uh, I think you did. <laughs> you got 11 again. Look at that. You got seven, three, you got 11. You nailed it. Three for three. Okay. Well, I'm zero for two. So um, let's see if I can at least get one. Please, let me get just one, five. So what would that be? One, two, three, four, five. I suppose it'd be this pile here under our little numbering system. So, okay, so down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one on top. This is my last chance to get something out of three. You have a perfect score, three out of three. I have zero out of two. How did I do? Well, there's the silly seven, of course, and the three. Uh, so I need this for me to uh, win this round. Uh, see, right now, this is a seven and a three, which is a 10. So I need an odd value here. Even value is gonna put me in trouble. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. 10 is even. So again, I've lost my third chance to try to catch up with you. Um, so you're three for three and I'm over three. I think I'll stop playing um, to avoid further embarrassment here. Um, now, as a final note, so that's the, a quick little presentation. A final note, we could play this game forever and guess what? You would continue to win every single time and I would lose every time I played, guaranteed. Okay, uh, partly because I'm so unlucky, but also the mathematics involved. Okay, so let's take a look at kind of what's going on here. And it uses a three tuple Bessie sequence of order eight. Okay, so let's talk about what's happening in this effect. It involves a three tuple Bessie sequences of order eight, okay? So if you've watched the first video in this series devoted to N tuple Bessie sequences, uh, you'll recognize the form for a three tuple. So here we have three ones, and then we have two sets of three zeros, and then three ones, and so forth. Notationally, we can 
compress all of this to just this statement here. The exponents denote concatenation, not repeat multiplication, which is kind of customary for numbers. So we're just using exponents in a different way than you may have seen them in, in the past, okay? Um, now, a couple of things I should mention uh, right from the start that you may want to take advantage of. Um, this three tuple, Bessie sequence of order eight, it does have a number of shuffles that can be performed that will not fundamentally destroy the structure. Now, it may invert it, and inversion means that zeros and ones switch places. Now, that, that's all that means, but so for what we're going to do, as long as you're aware of whether it's inverted or not, it doesn't pose a problem for us, okay? So if you remember, I performed a Klondike followed by an LR, I think, and then, um, you know, we stacked them randomly. I think I did a first shall be last, last shall be first. Uh, these other shuffles can be performed without harming things. This is a Klondike followed by an up jog, even, oh, either even or odd. Uh, this is a Bessie 3-3 three, three, where you pull the top three cards off as, you know, one at a time, and then the bottom three, top three, bottom three, and so forth. So that will preserve, or in particular, actually invert this structure, which is not a problem for us. Okay, so I started with something like this. Okay, so the, the key is, so maybe I'll take a moment and just uh, recreate it for you. So I might pause the video and do this. Now this isn't the exact ordering of the cards that I displayed at the start, um, but it has the same structure. So what it has going on is I have three even parity, even valued cards. That's like the little one, one, one there. And then I have six odd valued cards kind of represented by the zeros there, and then another three even value, and then I have three, sorry, let me slide these down, they're actually blocking the, the picture there, um, and then I have, and then we've got to get over here to three odd, so we have a five, three, and a jack, and then I have a whole string, six. <laughs> six even value cards and finally uh, three odd value cards okay so this has a three tuple bessie sequence structure of order eight okay so it's of the kind that we're talking about now this uh, so three tuple bessie sequences of order eight um, are either preserved or inverted by the shuffles i just mentioned a moment ago so you can mix it and so forth. Uh, now it is helpful to keep in mind whether or not you inverted it, okay? And if you have a hard time remembering that, the key is I have the three even values on top. If after mixing, I were to kind of straighten up the packet on the table just to like square it up, that's kind of a customary thing to do. I can see that the bottom card is an ace, which is odd. Okay, so if, if after kind of doing some of this mixing, I noted that that was an odd value, then I would know that I actually preserved this. I did not invert it. If at the end, I square this up and I see like a two down here, which is even, then I would know that I inverted it, okay? And, that, and that's kind of helpful moving forward. At least it tells you how it's going to turn out in the end, okay? Um, and then what I did there is I just dealt into three piles. Now here I'm doing from left to right, but I think it's kind of more interesting to uh, deal out into a triangle like this, okay? A little triangle. Okay, now at this point, so, um, well, maybe I will actually kind of move these. I, I need to get to my pieces of paper here. It actually doesn't matter what order those are. Um, oh, the, the point I'm making here is that uh, what will happen is if I started with this, whether it was preserved as is or inverted, dealing e out into three piles like I've done here will give you Bessie sequences of order eight. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, um, here in this particular case, Okay, so here we have 
Um, so we have an odd, even, even, odd, even, odd, odd, even, okay? So that kind of um, inverted it from what it was there, right, in, in terms of what we're looking at here, okay? Um, so this is an odd, even, even, odd, even, odd, odd, even, okay? And then, of course, one more. We'll have the same structure, namely odd, even, even, odd, even, odd, odd, even, okay? So these are called coupled piles. Coupled because um, at each level of the piles, uh, the cards have the same parity. They have some kind of common relationship, okay? So like the ones on top, these are all, quote, ones or of the same kind. Uh, the two kinds that we're talking about relative to zeros and ones is whether the card is even or odd. Okay, so there's just, yeah, a, a number is either even or odd. There's only two possibilities. And so that's what we're using the zeros and ones to denote. So in particular, it says that the parity of the top cards will all have to be the same, which they are. This is odd, 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 and so forth. The next card down will be even, 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 okay? So that one goes there, I believe, okay? Um, so to kind of be aware of that's going to um, be the structure here. So they're coupled. Um, so they're essentially is the same on each level is, is what's going on. I'm going to move these cards off the table because I've, I've got to slide the, the pieces of paper around. Sorry about that. Okay, so those are coupled piles, which is what we need to begin all of this, actually. Okay. Um, so um, here's kind of some of the details I mentioned. I had three even, six odd, three even, and so forth. Okay, so now I'm using E and O's for uh, denoting parity, of course. Okay, so if you find it helpful to think about it that way. Um, I do mention that we can perform as many of these shuffles that I pointed out earlier, uh, though it's helpful to make note of whether or not the um, packets of eight cards have been inverted from what you expect them to be. Okay, so that we've kind of shown you already. Okay, and then this is just listing the kinds of things you could get. So as was the case, so let me just, um, what we got here, when I dealt those out, we all of the top cards were odd. Okay, so that's important. So in some sense, they're all starting out the same. These are identical relative to their Bessie sequence structure. They're all equivalent, okay? Now they're all equally um, uh, good for what we'll be doing, okay? Now, the key to all of this is the fact that the down under shuffle, um, it doesn't preserve Bessie sequences of order eight, but it inverts them, which is fine. So what that does is it switches zeros for ones and ones for zeros. Here, it will switch even parity cards with odd parity cards. Okay, so w whichever pile you decide to perform the down under shuffle on, it's going to, in some sense, if you want to just read this in reverse, like flip it, uh, we'll have even, odd, odd, even, and so forth. Okay, whereas the other ones would stay the same. Okay, well, just think about what happens when you add up three numbers What's true about the parity of the sum relative to the individual parities? Okay, so that's kind of something important to think about. So for the third time, I'll move those off. Okay, so here we go. Let me just point out some, you know, some fundamentals that you're probably aware of. So what we allow the spectator to do then is we allow them, we're, well, it's customary to have them go first. Um, no one's going to really question that. Um, that. That's just common courtesy. Uh, but you can give them the freedom to declare what would be a winning outcome for, for them. Okay? Um, now, it is true for this particular situation here, if those top values are odd, which is the case for us in this tutorial part of this video, if the person who goes first chooses even, then they will always win on their turn. And if the person who goes second chooses odd, they will always win on their turn. 
Okay, that's, that's the key. So what's going to happen is each, as you saw, each time we played this, the sum came out to be even, then odd, even, then odd. Yeah, it alternated, right? It's going to alternate perfectly, which is actually very surprising <laughs> considering that you're randomly choosing these different piles of what the spectator believes are random cards and then you're just adding up their values and assessing, okay, is that an even number or an odd number? Well, it ends up that it will perfectly alternate, either even, odd, even, odd throughout or odd, even, odd, even, okay? And it will alternate in one way or, or the other depending on the starting configuration of your piles, okay? Now, it ends up that if you rewind the video, the three piles I had, they did not start out with odd values on top. They started out with even values, okay? And then I allowed you to go first. And I allowed you to choose what is a, well, we did, we actually rolled the die, right? We left it to the universe. And the universe said, okay, a winning round for you as a spectator will be if the sum of the top three cards is odd, then you win that round, okay? So that would be a win for you, okay? Well, because we started with evens on top, if we down under shuffle any one of these, it will switch from what would have been even to being odd for the parity, okay? And we'll actually see that kind of idea in a second, so as I explain this, okay? Um, so that's the thing to be aware of. So there are a few possibilities then. If you truly allow the spectator to choose when they go, first or second, and whether even or odd would constitute a winning round for them, there are a few possibilities. But once they make those choices, and you've made your choices, you know exactly what the outcome will be. In fact, you can engineer how you'll do relative to them. Okay, so because of what the universe gave us in the original performance, the spectator was always going to win when their turn came around. They were always going to win, okay? So what I decided to do on the fly, I thought, okay, well, I could choose the parody in such a way, namely even, where I would always win on my turn, okay? So each of us would be, quote, equally lucky equally successful in getting the parity right for for the top three cards when we go to add them okay so i i could have had it come out to be a perfect tie and then kind of point out that oh boy you know looks like we are evenly matched in our level of luckiness that's pretty interesting to know that you know so i could have done that which would be fine and interesting or well, at that point you could even write a prediction if you wanted so once the spectator's success or failure was decided because of their choices, the choices being do they want to go first or second, and then their choice of card sum parity, okay? So um, in the original performance, the spectator was always going to win, and I decided, well, it might be kind of fun to always lose, you know, and you can poke fun at yourself and really hold up the spectator as, boy, you you are just a lucky person, aren't you? Have you sensed that in your life that things just seem to go your way, you know? And they'll, they'll probably maybe think about it and go, well, yeah, I guess so. I, I, I guess I feel pretty lucky, you know? So, of course, it, you know, it's all just narrative that you're creating on the fly. Um, so that's the direction I decided to go. Now, it could be, so what are the different possibilities? Well, the spectator could make choices where they always win in their round or always lose. Well, if they always win, you have the choice of matching them in always winning. That's kind of fun. Or choosing what I chose that I would always lose and make kind of fun of myself for that. Or they could have made choices where we knew that they would always lose. And so we could also make a choice where we always lose. So we can both be equally unlucky together, you know, kind of commiserate with each other how unlucky we seem to be. 
or if the spectator had chosen in such a way that they were always going to lose, I could have chosen so that I would always win. And kind of, it just turns the table where you're kind of uh, looking pretty good as the performer. You just can't be beat. You're always winning and the poor spectator loses every time. Okay. So, you know, there's several possibilities. Each one is equally interesting and engaging and fun to adopt if needs be. Okay. Um, so let me just go on to the next little sheet here. Okay, so what I'm pointing out here, if this helps people, like, so right now for my piles, if you remember, I have the top cards are odd valued, okay? And we're going to have the spectator quote go first, let's say. Now, the down under shuffle, as I mentioned, changes the parity of the top card of whatever pile you choose. Well, all of them have an odd value card at the top, so it actually doesn't matter which one they choose, okay? Uh, so it will switch, let's say they choose this pile here, so it switches from an odd parity to an even, okay? Well, you may know that when you add up two odd numbers, you always, always get an even number. Okay, so two odds make an even. And of course, when you add an even to an even, it's even still, okay? So that's something to be aware of. So this is a bit of Boolean algebra, or Boolean logic here that we're kind of looking at. You know, what happens when you add up three even numbers or two even and one odd and so forth, okay? Um, uh, this is one possibility, the first person to go. If they hadn't chosen as their winning parity uh, even, they're in trouble, right? They're, they're going to lose. Now you as the performer get, get to go. Well, it ends up that it doesn't even matter which of these you choose to shuffle because the down under shuffle will invert whichever one you choose. Okay, so let's just look at what happens. So the initial state was here. The top card of each pile is odd. Okay, we saw that. Uh, maybe they choose this pile. The down under shuffle inverts that packet. So now the top card is even. The other two are odd, but that sum is even. Okay, um, now it's your turn as the performer. Well, just look at what can happen here. So this is what you're starting with. Well, look at what happens. There's just a couple of possibilities. Um, if you choose one of these to shuffle, it will invert it so it becomes even when it was odd before. Um, or it could be that you choose this one that they just shuffled and it returns the parity back to odd. Okay, so there really are two outcomes. Well, but look at what happens for each outcome. An even plus an even plus an odd is an odd. Okay, an odd plus an odd plus an odd is still an odd. Okay, so the only way the, the, the person who goes second is going to win, given this initial state, is if they choose odd as their winning parity. Okay, um, now I, I know that this can be a little bit confusing because in the original performance, because of the shuffling that we did, we did not begin with this one, right? We began with even, 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 okay? But all it does is it just kind of reverses all of the implications here. But if you understand the logic of adding even numbers and odd numbers, I just realized we were going off the screen, sorry about that, um, then you'll stay safe. You'll be, able, you'll be able to figure this out just fine, okay? So that's after the uh, second play. So uh, the first person, uh, the spectator's gone, the performer's gone, now the spectator's gonna go again. Well, what they're having to deal with are the packet, the three packets as you left them. So either you've shuffled a packet in such a way that there is now a top card that's even, even, and then the third one's odd, or all three are back to being odd. Well, if the spectator chooses one of those and down under shuffles them, it reverses the parity, okay? So in particular, this one right here, if they happen to have chosen this one to shuffle, you'll have even, 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 which gives you an even sum. Or if they happen to choose this one, 
um, shuffling any one of those is going to also give you an even sum because two odds give you an even and an even plus an even is an even okay and then after the fourth place it'll be odd okay so the the thing to remember is that regardless of the initial state of the top cards now they'll either all three of them will be even or all three will be odd that's important that will always be the case with what we've shown you here in terms of when you arrive at this point with three piles there's only two possibilities all of them are odd for the top card or all of them are even okay so that you can plan on and that's because it's it's a three tuple Bessie sequence okay so these piles are going to be coupled meaning they'll have the same top card parity that you can plan on uh, but the point I was making is that each time this is played each time you uh, randomly choose one of the three piles to down under shuffle it switches the outcome for the winning parity okay so here um, you know initially the outcome is odd and then for the first person it's even then odd then even then odd and not, these are just showing the different cases but these end of these different cases within that particular play of the game that they agree right okay um, and then just for reference if you aren't aware of how even and odd numbers combine to give you an even or odd sum uh, here's a summary of that okay um, why don't we go ahead and we'll just kind of practice here so we started with a three tuple uh, maybe I'll put my hands in the, oh, see boy I, I need to lighten this a little bit or darken it I'm sorry okay let's remind you so the top cards are all odd okay so that's where we happen to have started okay and then you give the spectator the choice um, you can you know I, I, one thing you may want to do is um, I think it's safe to just plan on them going first I, I think that's okay uh, I really do or if you're worried about them you know I don't know trying to throw sand in the gears or something you can have that decided you know up front um, you know we, we we can decide it just by a random event even you know if we would like but um, okay so let's let's decide who goes first maybe the spectator would feel better about that um, so let's say if it's a uh, let's say if it's an even number here, you go first. If it's an odd number on the die roll, I go first, performer. Okay, looks like I get to go first because it's odd. Okay, that's fine. And the spectator may choose that, which is great. Okay, so I get to go first. Um, and then you can ask the spectator, well, what will constitute a winning round for you? An even or odd parity for the sum of these three card values and it's a free choice because you know that we're starting out with odd 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 whoever goes first if they choose an even parity for their winning round or winning hand if you want to refer to it that way uh, they're going to win and they're going to win every time their turn comes around they'll win every single time Okay, so the spectator is free to choose even or odd. Uh, why don't we go ahead and just leave it up to chance by, you know, looking at the parity of the, of the number, one through six. Okay, even. Okay, so they choose, they choose um, even as their winning parity. Okay. Um, and also, oh, yeah, 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 we have to be, I have to be, you know, let me be a little careful here. I, I, I was assuming they're going first. And if they went first with an even parity for their sum, they would always win. That's what's mentioned in the write-up we just looked at. Uh, but they want me to go first. Well, guess what? <laughs> that means they're always going to lose. Okay, so I know right off that that poor spectator doesn't have a chance. No matter uh, what packet is down under shuffled, um, if they're going to go second and their parity choice is even, they're going to lose every time their turn comes around. Okay, So at that point, I would just kind of quickly decide, do I want to be an equally bad loser 
with them and then kind of make fun of the fact that, boy, we're both unlucky. Um, or I could choose in such a way that I always win. So why don't we leave that to chance? We'll say, even, um, I'll choose to lose with them <laughs> every round, and odd, I choose to win. Two, okay, I choose to lose with them. So we're both going to lose every single time we do this, okay? Well, what do I need to choose for my winning parity for me to always lose? Well, right now these are all odd, and we know that whoever goes first, which is me by the die roll, if I choose even for my parity, I will always win. But if I choose odd, I will always lose. So in this particular case, if I want to lose all of my rounds just as they will, I should say odd for my quote winning parity. So I'm going first and I'm declaring, well, uh, a winning outcome for me is if the top three cards add up to an odd number, okay? But now what I need to do before we check that is I need to randomly choose one of these to down under shuffle. In a real performance, I'm free to actually choose that, okay? Just like the spectator if there's a spectator here, is free to choose which pile they shuffle, okay? Uh, but since uh, we don't have a spectator here, and maybe just to really drive home that this works, it doesn't actually matter which one I choose, uh, why don't we go ahead and <clears throat> roll the dice. This is pile one, two, three. So it would take us to this first pile then. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a down. Under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one on top. Okay, so I've declared my winning parity to be an odd value for the sum. Okay, so let's see how we did. So 12 plus 7 is 19. That's pretty good. That's odd. The problem is I have one more card. Okay, so right now, <laughs> this is odd. <laughs> Oops, sorry, I picked up two cards. This is odd as well. Oh, and we know that two odds add to an even. So I've lost my round. Ah, oh darn. Okay, and now it's the spectator's turn. Okay, and if you remember, they chose as their winning parity, uh, even. Okay, and so they're free to choose any one of these to down under shuffle. Why don't we leave it to the die roll here? Sorry, uh, six. So it'd be like pi one, two, three, four, five, six. So this one, okay, um, and you know it could have been the one that they chose. So a down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top. Okay, how did the spectator do? He, uh, the spectator's looking for an even parity. That will give the spectator a win if it's an even parity. Well, this is 12 plus 11 is 23. That's odd right now. Plus eight, which is still odd then for the sum. Okay, so the spectator loses their round as well. Okay, and we'll just do two more to kind of convince you of this, okay? So it's my turn and I've chosen odd parity as my winning parity. Okay, six again. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's this pile again. So if we perform the down under again, uh, mathematically this just inverts the pack. Oops, sorry, inverts the packet. That's all it does. Okay, and so I'm hoping to get an odd parity here. Does it come out to be that? I don't know. Uh, 12 plus 11 is 23, plus 7 is 30. That's even. I was hoping for odd, so I've lost again. Okay, and then we'll do one final turn for the spectator. Okay, so they've chosen as their winning parity even. So let's roll this. 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This would be the you know, packet they might randomly choose here. Okay. Sure is a lot easier if I actually had a live spectator. But even then you would have to trust that the spectator's not, not in on it or something. Okay, and so uh, the spectator will only win this round if this comes out to be even. Okay, 
Does it come out to be even? Ooh, it's looking good right here. That's 12 plus 10 is 22. This better not be odd. Oh, we blew it. So this comes out to have odd parity. So, so the spectator loses again. So we both just keep losing. So we're both equally unlucky, it appears. Okay, so anyway, that's the effect using a three-tuple Bessie sequence of order eight in which the structure involves is kind of centered on the parity of the top cards that result after randomly choosing one of the piles to down under shuffle. And the wonderful thing about down under shuffling, it inverts the pile, which switches the parity of the top card. Okay, so um, have fun with that. That's kind of a fun one. It's not one that you can do brainlessly. You will have to kind of keep track of some things and think through some things. Um, but I've given you all of the tools and really it's just meant to be an example of how you could use three tuple Bessie sequences of order eight. So thank you very much for watching.